Mankind has ever ventured into the unknown, seeking knowledge for the betterment of civilization. But with the advancement of technology, the world became smaller, with the blanks on maps being filled in. But the Northwest Passage would elude many searches, one ending in disaster. This is the history of the Franklin Expedition. The search by Europeans for a western shortcut by sea from Europe to Asia began with voyages of Portuguese and Spanish explorers in the 15th century, Christopher Columbus being among them. By the mid 19th century, numerous expeditions had been mounted, originating mainly from the Kingdom of England. These voyages, when successful, added to the sum of European geographic knowledge about the Western Hemisphere, particularly North America. As that knowledge grew, exploration gradually shifted towards the Arctic. In 1804, Sir John Barrow became Second Secretary of the Admiralty, a post he held until 1845. Barrow began pushing for the Royal Navy to find a Northwest Passage over the top of Canada and to navigate towards the North Pole organising a series of major expeditions. Over those four decades, explorers including John Ross, David Butchen, William Edward Parry, Frederick William Beechey, John Clark Ross and George Back all led productive expeditions to the Canadian Arctic. Among these explorers was John Franklin, who first travelled to the region in 1818 as second in command of an expedition towards the North Pole and the ships Dorothea and Trent. Franklin was subsequently leader of two overland expeditions, two and along the Canadian Arctic coast in 1819-22 and 1825-27. By 1845, the combined discoveries of all these expeditions had reduced the unknown parts of the Canadian Arctic that might contain a Northwest Passage. It was into these unexplored areas that the next expedition was to sail, with the goal of finding a northwest passage. The distance to be navigated was roughly 1,040 miles. Barrow was now 82 years old and nearing the end of his career. He felt that the expeditions were close to finding a northwest passage and deliberated over who should command the next expedition. William Edward Parry, his first choice, was tired of the Arctic and politely declined. His second choice, James Clark Ross, also declined because he had promised his new wife that he had finished with polar exploration. Barrow's third choice, James Fitzjames, was rejected by the Admiralty because of his youth. Another possibility was Francis Crozier, but he was of humble birth and Irish, which counted against him. Reluctantly, Barrow settled on the 59-year-old John Franklin. The expedition was to consist of two ships, HMS Erebus and HMS Terror, both of which had been used for James Clark Ross's expedition to the Antarctic in 1841-1844, to during which Crozer had commanded Terror. Franklin was given command of Erebus. Crozier was appointed his executive officer and was again made commander of Terror. Fitzjames was appointed second in command of Erebus. Franklin received command of the expedition on the 7th of February 1845 and his official instructions on the 5th of May 1845. Erebus and Terror were sturdily built with reinforced bows constructed of heavy beams and iron plates. The ships were well equipped including several recent inventions. Steam engines were fitted and an internal steam heating system for the comfort of the crew in polar conditions. Also, there were libraries of more than 1,000 books and three years' supply of food, which included tin soup and vegetables, salt-cured meat and several live cattle. The haste required affected the quality control of some of the tins, which were later found to have lead soldering that was thick and slopperily done and dripped like melted candle wax down the inside surface. The expedition set sail from Greenough, Kent on the morning of 19th of May 1845 
with a crew of 24 officers and 110 men. The ships stopped briefly at Stromness, Oakney Islands in northern Scotland. From there they sailed to Greenland with HMS Rattler and a transport ship, Barreto Jr. The passage to Greenland took 30 days. At the Whalefish Islands on the west coast of Greenland, 10 oxen carried on Barreto Jr. were slaughtered for fresh meat which was transferred to Erebus and Terra. Crew members then wrote their last letters home, which recorded that Franklin had banned swearing and drunkenness. Five men were discharged due to sickness and sent home on Rattler and Barreto Jr., reducing the final crew to 129 men. In late July 1845, the whalers Prince of Wales and Enterprise encountered Terra and Erebus in Baffin Bay where they were waiting for good conditions to cross the Lancaster Sound. The expedition was never heard of again by Europeans. Only limited information is available for subsequent events, pieced together over the next 150 years by other expeditions, explorers, scientists and interviews with the Inuit. The only first-hand information on the expedition's progress is the two-part Victory Point note found in the aftermath on King William Island. Franklin's men spent the winter of 1845-46 on Beatty Island where three crew members died and were buried. After travelling down Peel Sound through the summer of 1846, Terra and Erebus became trapped in the ice off King William Island in September 1846 and are thought never to have sailed again. According to the second part of the Victory Point note, dated 25th of April 1848 and signed by Fitzjames and Crozer, the crew had wintered off King William Island in 1846-47 and 1847-48 and Franklin had died on the 11th of June 1847. The remaining crew had abandoned the ships and planned to walk over the island and across the sea ice towards the Back River on the Canadian mainland, beginning on the 26th of April 1848. In addition to Franklin, eight further officers and 15 men had also died by this point. The Victory Point note is the last known communication of the expedition. After two years had passed with no word from Franklin, public concern grew and Jane, Lady Franklin, as well as members of Parliament and British newspapers, urged the Admiralty to send a search party. Although the Admiralty said it did not feel any reason to be alarmed, it responded by developing a three-pronged plan, which in the spring of 1848 sent an overland rescue party, led by John Richardson and John Ray, down the Mackenzie River to the Canadian Arctic coast. Two expeditions by sea were also launched, one led by James Clark Ross entering the Canadian Arctic through Lancaster Sound and the other commanded by Henry Kellett entering from the Pacific. In addition, the Admiralty offered a reward of £20,000, which is over £2 million today, to any who shall render assistance to the crews of the Discovery ships under the command of Sir John Franklin. When the three-pronged effort failed, British national concern and interest in the Arctic increased until finding Franklin became nothing less than a crusade. In 1850, 11 British and two American ships cruised the Canadian Arctic, including Breadalbane and her sister ship HMS Phoenix. Several converged off the east coast of Beatty Island, where the first relics of the expedition were found including remnants of a winter camp from 1845 to 1846. Robert Goodsir, surgeon on the brig Lady Franklin, found the graves of John Torrington, John Hartnell and William Brain. No message from the Franklin expedition were found at this site. In 1852, Edward Belcher was given command of the Government Arctic expedition in search of Franklin, but that too was unsuccessful. In 1854, John Ray, while surveying the Bouvier Peninsula for the Hudson Bay Company, discovered further evidence of the expedition's fate. Ray met an Inuk near Pella Bay on the 21st of April, 
who told him of a party of 35 to 40 white men who had died of starvation near the mouth of the Back River. Other Inuit confirmed this story, which included reports of cannibalism among the dying sailors. The Inuit showed Ray many objects that were identified as having belonged to Franklin and his men. In particular, Ray brought from the Inuit several silver forks and spoons, later identified as belonging to Franklin. Despite the findings of Ray, the Admiralty did not plan another search of its own. Britain officially labelled the crew deceased in service on the 31st of March 1854. Lady Franklin, failing to convince the government to fund another search, personally commissioned one more expedition under Francis Leopold McClintock. The expedition ship, the Steam Schooner Fox, brought via public subscription, sailed from Aberdeen on the 2nd of July 1857. In April 1859, sled parties set out from Fox to search on King William Island, and on May the 5th, the party found a document in a car left by Crozier and Fitzjames. It contained two messages. The first, dated 28th of May 1847, said that Erebus and Terror had wintered in the ice off the northwest coast of King William Island, and had wintered earlier at Beatty Island after circumnavigating Cornwallis Island. The second message, dated 25th of April 1848, written in the margins of that same sheet of paper, was much more ominous. The McClintock expedition also found a human skeleton on the southern coast of King William Island. Still clothed, it was searched, and some papers were found, including a seaman's certificate for Chief Petty Officer Harry Peglar. At another site, on the western extreme of the island, Hobson discovered a lifeboat containing two skeletons and relics from the Franklin expedition. In the boat was a large amount of abandoned equipment, including books, silk handkerchiefs, scented soaps, sponges, slippers, hair combs and many books. Among them, a copy of The Vicar of Wakefield by Oliver Goldsmith. McClintock also took testimony from the Inuit about the expedition's disastrous end. Despite the expedition's notorious failure, it did succeed in exploring the vicinity of what was one of the many Northwest passages to eventually be discovered. Robert McClaw led one of the expeditions that investigated the fate of Franklin's expedition, a voyage which was also beset by great challenges and later controversies. McClaw's expedition returned after finding an icebound route that connected the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean. The Northwest Passage was not navigated by boat until 1906. In 2014, a Canadian search team led by Parks Canada located the wreck of Erebus in the eastern portion of Queen Maud Gulf. Two years later, the Arctic Research Foundation found the wreck of Terror south of King William Island in the coincidentally named Terror Bay.